Hello my gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Reading Mindfully. My name is Yana and today we are talking about spider mites. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So like I said, today we are talking about spider mites. And so as far as spider mites, they are closely related to the arachnids or the spiders. And what they do is they prey on plants by sucking out the juice and the saps of plant leaves. And yes, this is a calathea. We will talk about this in another video. But with spider mites, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're checking the fronts and most importantly the backs of the leaves because that's where the spider mites will hide out and they tend to live is on the backs of your leaves. This is where the female also lays her eggs and she can lay up to 100 eggs on the backs of your leaves, so that's why it's really important that you look on the backs of your leaves as well as the stems. Their life cycle is about 14 days, and it could be as short as 7 to 10 days, which is really important when you make sure when you're doing your preventative and your treatments. Like I said, so they suck out the saps of your leaves and what spider mites really enjoy is a dry condition and I found over time that it's not mainly a humidity issue as well as it is a moisture issue and what I mean by that is when your plants are water stressed not humidity but water stress so when you go too long without watering your plants, your plants become stressed. And so what they do is they f give off pheromones, which attracts certain bugs to the plant. And this is mainly, this mainly happens to plants that like a lot of water, such as alocasias or even your calatheas. So these are plants that need to be kept moist. And when they go too long without moisture, which too much, when they go too long without a watering, that is usually when spider mites show up in your collection. And so the best thing that you want to do to prevent spider mites is to, one, you want to make sure that when you're picking up plants, that they're healthy plants, that they don't have spider mites. So that way when you bring them back to your house, you don't have a spider mite issue. Now, if you do have a spider mite issue and you bring the plant back to your house, you want to try to quarantine that plant while you do go ahead and do your treatments. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're wiping your leaves. And like I said, spider mites hang out on the backs of your leaves. So you want to make sure you're wiping the front and the backs of the leaves. So that way you can make sure that, you know, not having a spider mite issue and you're paying attention to your stems. So like I said, one, make sure to have your healthy plant. Two, if you do have spider mites, quarantine. Three, make sure you're wiping your leaves. You can also use neem oil to prevent spider mites. Neem oil does not kill spider mites. It is more of a preventative measure. And so if you like to make sure you don't have a spider mite issue, you can also use neem oil as a preventative and, you know, use that to spray on your plants on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Now, the best thing I found to not have spider mites, and I really only had a spider mite issue once this whole year, and that is to make sure that your plant is not stressed and mainly not water stressed. And so if your plant, if you have a plant like a calathea and they like a lot of water, you want to make sure you are using one of these moisture meters so that way you're making sure that your plant isn't drying out too quickly and too much. And so when I probe my calathea, you can see there that it's still in the moisture section. And so if this calathea were to hit a three, which is just going into the dry section, I would go ahead and water this plant. I would do not let this plant go all the way dry. When the plant goes too dry and it loves water, that is when you start to have issues. Now, if you have plants that don't mind drying out, such as philodendrons or monsteras, 
they don't have as much of an issue drying out. It's only really when you have plants that really love water, they don't want to dry out. And like I said, when they dry out, that is when they signal, hey, I'm stressed out, and that is when the spider mites come. Uh, so that is what I've seen prevent spider mites is when my plants aren't stressed. Now, if you have a spider mite issue, what you want to do is, you, like I said, you can go ahead and uh, you can use like an insecticide. And what I use is the Captain Jack's Dead Brew Bug. And like I said, you want to hit the front of the leaves. You want to hit the backs of the leaves because that's where they are. And if your plant has any sinuses, you want to make sure that you get in there as well as hit the stems. Now, once you, um, if you don't want to use insecticide, and there are organic versions of the insecticide, such as the Captain Jacks, there's also the Miracle Grow or the Miracle Care line as well. Uh, there are other videos in. Um, there are other YouTubers that use an alcohol, um, like a dish soap and water mix. I don't really use those, and so I wouldn't really want to speak on that just because I don't like to suggest things that I don't use. But there are several YouTubers that use that mix, and they swear by it. Heart Shaped Lease has a video on her channel where she does that, as well as My City Plants, and I can link those in the description as well. But again, you just want to hit the front, hit the back, and the stems. And then you also want to make sure that if you've never used a spray before and it's you know foreign to you, to just you to spray it on one leaf just to see how your plant is going to react to it. That way, you just don't kill your entire plant. And so. Once you have gotten control of your spider mites, then that's when I would suggest going in with the neem oil and you know just doing preventative measures, whether that's weekly or bi-weekly. But I found in my experience that neem oil does not kill spider mites. It is more of a preventative measure so you don't really have that issue in the future. But like I said, the plants that I found that are affected the most by spider mites are water-loving plants, like the calatheas, the alocasias, and plants like that. You just wanna make sure that your plant is not going to dry. If a plant needs to be moist, you wanna make sure that you water it well before it gets too dry, and you shouldn't have too many spider mite issues. And really, if you keep having a spider mite issue, and you're using the treatments and you know the sprays, you really wanna look to see why your plant keeps getting spider mites. If you're using the neem oil and your spider mites keep coming back, you need to understand why the spider mites keep attacking your plant. It's something wrong with your plant. Your plant is telling you that something about your care is not benefiting the plant. It doesn't really help for you to just keep bumping up the humidity because after a while, humidity does not really help your situation. And like I said, if your humidity is at least 40%, that's pretty good humidity for your plants. Most plants like the 50 to 60% range. Anything higher than that is really not gonna do anything besides introduce bacteria and fungal and, you know, fungal infections into your plant collection and you know you'll see that showing on your plant leaves so and why i say it's not a humidity issue is because at any point in time in my home my humidity ranges from 56 at the very lowest to about 80 percent and my philodendron medallus still ended up getting spider mites and so this is why I've, I know for a fact it is just, it's not just a humidity issue. And I will even insert a picture of my hygrometer just to show you guys that my humidity is currently around 79%. And that is because of all the rain that we've been getting in my area and I live on the first floor. And so that's why I think my humidity is so high. And 
you can even see on the side what my humidity range is at so I just wanted to show you guys that it is always it's not always just humidity there are other things that stress out your plants and cause you to get spider mites so when you think of spider mites, just think of moisture in general and not just humidity. You want to make sure that your watering is on point. And if you're having issues to use the, the moisture meter, these really do help. And they're only $10. And they will save your plants and give, save you a lot of heartache as well. So those are my tips for spider mites. Like I said, I've only had one spider mite issue this whole year and it was on my philodendron McDowell. And I just, I missed the watering and I really wasn't paying attention to the plant. As well as it, it needed to be repotted into a bigger plant because it was drying out too quickly. And so that was also another reason why it wasn't retaining moisture. But you can see that the damage on your plants you'll see a little bit of yellow modeling and then if your spider mite situation is really bad you'll see a lot of webbing on the front and the backs of the leaves and your plant will leaves will start to shrivel up over time until they fall off so i hope this video helps you guys with your spider mites let me know what you guys use on your you know your plants and if you have a reoccurring spider mite issue like i said it is a moisture problem not a humidity problem you want to make sure you water your plants correctly and as always i just want to thank you guys so much for watching my channel liking and subscribing and i hope to see you in the next one bye